Now that we've navigated our way through both substitution reactions, both SN2 and SN1, and same thing with elimination reactions, E2 and E1, and we've also kind of dipped our feet into the world of alcohols, now it's kind of time to see what else is out there. And we're going to start off with different functional groups in this video series called ethers and epoxides. However, while we will learn new reactions along the way, I don't want to get into it yet, because the first thing we need to talk about <clears throat> or something called rearrangements. And this isn't going to be too mind-blowing. This, this is just going to kind of build on your knowledge of carbocations. So remember what we talked about earlier. Let's just say, or we said primary carbocations are less stable than secondary carbocations, which are less stable than tertiary carbocations, right? I'm going to grab a different marker. So to give you guys some examples, I don't know, some type of primary carbocation like that, secondary carbocation such as that, and a tertiary carbocation, whoops, such as that. So most stable, second most stable, least stable. All right, so here's my question to you guys. Remember, we say nature always tends towards stability. So what we're going to kind of see with these rearrangements is that if you form a carbocation in a situation where it can make itself better, more stable, it will do that in two different ways that we're going to look at. But I will just show you some examples. So first I want to go over the ways we currently know how to make carbocations and I want to kind of introduce some new ways that you guys know but kind of just say it out loud. So remember when we did SN1 reactions, solvolysis made us a carbocation. So let's just say I had isopropyl bromide and I had water as our solvent, a polar protic solvent, right? That's going to help wean this good leaving group off, right? And if I'm just going to show you guys the carbocation intermediate, it would look something like this, right? Just a secondary carbocation. So that's the first way we know. Do this in a nice pretty red color. Okay, here's the second way. And I don't think this has been... Uh, said out loud, but let's just kind of do it. So remember we said alcohols are amphoteric, right? They can both donate H+, as well as pick up H+, it can act as an acid and a base. So let's just say we had an alcohol, and let's say we threw in some strong acid like HBr, HI, HCl, H2SO4, it doesn't really matter. What happens is this alcohol actually grabs H+, and the, those electrons would go on to whatever uh, your conjugate base of the acid would be. And then you have this good leaving group, right? If I'm going to draw it like this, I'm going to draw OH2, or we can say it regularly like normal people, this is H2O, this is water, that's a good leaving group. And kind of in a solvolysis type fashion, it also leaves, and you're left with a carbocation. So we can form carbocations by so regular solvolysis through an SN1 mechanism, and we can protonate alcohols such like this. I guess I'll just write protonate alcohols. There's another way that you can make carbocations, but I want to kind of save that for the next video in a new reaction we're going to learn. Okay, so these are the two big ways for now that I want you guys to recognize that we can make carbocations. So let me erase this, and I'm going to propose to you guys a little bit of a kind of a dilemma, not a dilemma, oh, yeah, a dilemma, and I want, we're going to kind of reason through this dilemma together. Okay, so let's just say I had this type of reactant, and we threw in some water right here. We expect an SN2, so we have a secondary substrate, good leaving group, polar product solvent, you totally expect SN1, an SN1 pathway, so volatiles to occur, carbocation formation, eventual attack with this water to give us an alcohol functional group, right? So let me draw you the mechanism below in nice blue color. So first thing that's going to happen is we know bromine is going to be weaned off by our water, our polar product solvent. So he's going to pack his bags and get at. So all right, solvolysis. Sorry if my handwriting is bad. Okay, so that is going to leave us with this type of scenario. A, po a positive formal charge 
on this carbon, we're going to have a carbocation. Except it's not going to stay there. From now on, every time you form a carbocation, you need to look to every carbon neighboring it and see if you can make it better. If we moved our carbocation over here, it would be primary, not better than our secondary one. However, you guys see this tertiary carbocation to the left. If we could somehow swing it to kind of transfer this carbocation's positive charge to this tertiary carbon, that would be an overall energetic effect nature would like, right? So here's what happens. Because you have a hydrogen next door, we're going to do what's called a hydride shift. Hydride because we're literally going to move this hydrogen, whoops, we're going to move this hydrogen right there and the two electrons it currently has in this bond with carbon. This is hydride ion, so we're literally shifting a hydride to this carbon. And here's how you draw the arrow. Uh, you got to just draw from the bond to the carbon you're shifting the hydride to. And some people will some people will kind of draw this as like a hydride shift, but we don't really need to draw that. All you need to, needed to know is that, oh, you saw a secondary carbocation. You saw the opportunity to make it better next door. We have a, hydri a hydride ion to shift over here, giving this carbon a bond to eliminate its positive formal charge and move that charge to this carbon because, right, we're kind of moving a bond to here. He gains a bond. He loses a bond. So here is the net change. If I asterisk this carbon, or sorry, this hydrogen, Right now he's over here. So you can see we, sh we did a, a hydride rearrangement, a hydride shift. Okay? Now here's the part where, I'm actually going to just use black. Now we have our, our water come in and attack. Right? You have to check for shifts first, then continue your mechanism. Right? He comes in and attacks this now tertiary carbocation. He now looks like this, right? He has a positive charge because he attacked his water. We need to clean him up. Let's use this Br- minus from back here to grab one of these protons. Oops. And dump those electrons on him. Kind of go back here. So there's the final product, right? So that's what's called a hydride shift. And in the worksheet, I have you guys practice this a bunch. I want to introduce you guys to another shift called a methyl shift in this video. And once we have both of those <clears throat> kind of explained, I'm going to do some examples with you guys still in this video. So let me erase this, and then we'll kind of figure out what a methyl shift is. Okay, gang. Now I want to show you what the other type of carbocation shift, carbocation rearrangement you can have, and that's called a methyl shift. So... Let me just give you guys some structure. And for this time, let's use an OH, let's have an alcohol, and let's have the type of reaction where let's have HI. Um, they're going to, this OH, this oxygen, is going to pick up that H+, plus, right? So let's just draw that from the get-go. I'm going to draw my arrow down here. Right, so once we protonate that alcohol, we're expecting, right, so we have, we have water and through a solvolysis type uh, phenomenon, he's going to leave. He's a good leaving group. Water is stable on its own. Draw this over here. So now we get to the point where we formed a carbocation, right? So again, we need to play this game of because now we always have to play this game. We can't just assume our carbocations will stay the way they are. Can we make this carbocation more stable? Can we move him to a better place? So we look to the left. Primary carb or this would be a primary carbocation if we did a hydride shift, right? Because there's three hydrogens here. Well, that's a no-go, right? We don't want to go. It, that would be a downgrade, right? Going from a secondary carbocation to a primary. So let me erase that. That's just a whole bunch of nonsense. However, right, we can see to the right, we don't have a tertiary carbon. We actually have a quaternary carbon, right? He's, a, he's quaternary because he's four bonds to the four different carbons. Okay, so what can we do here? 
So in the last video, we had a tertiary carbocation and we moved a hydride to the carbocation to shift the charge. Well, what we can do here is we can actually shift a whole methyl branch to have that same effect. Right, if I fill in this CH3 up here, what we can literally do, just like shifting that hydrogen, that hydride ion, is take this whole CH3 and the electrons in this bond to this carbon, and we can move a whole methyl branch to that carbon right there. It sounds crazy, but we can do it. And here's kind of the result of that electron flow. Whoops, that he is moved, my bad. So now, if we're gonna look at this quaternary carbon right here, he only has two methyl groups coming off of him. And this carbon right here now has a methyl group down here. That's CH3 we actually moved. So the charge shifts from this carbon that used to have it next door right there. So you can see we can shift uh, hydride or hydrogens and the bonds or the electrons in the bonds they have to a carbon or we can do the same thing with a methyl group. We can literally shift the CH3 and the electrons in the bond it has to a carbon to a carbocation to then shift the charge. Okay, so now that we've done our shift and we've made our carbocation the most stable it can be, right, we still have this I minus hanging around. So let's have him come in and we can attack. And that would be the last step in our mechanism. Iodine is right here. And this carbon has that CH3 right here. Okay, so you can see that the process goes like this now, guys. If you have some mechanism that involves a carbocation intermediate, if a, po if a carbon is donning any positive charge whatsoever, you have to look, you know, left, right, up, down. Any t you have to look next door to any carbon that is neighboring it and see, can I make this carbocation better? Can I do a hydride shift? Can I do a methyl shift? Okay? So this is covered in the first worksheet in this series, but I'm going to erase this, and I want to do two examples together of just kind of eyeballing, okay, this is the carbocation I originally formed. Can I shift it? Yes or no? So let me erase this real quick. We'll do two examples, and then we will call it quits for this video. All right, gang, hang with me. We have these two problems to kind of go through, and then we're done with this video. All right, so let's tackle this first one. So let's see what we have, right? We have a secondary substrate, secondary carbon, and he's attached to an alcohol. That's kind of the interesting functional group in this structure. And you can see over the arrow, we have a strong acid, right? H2SO4, he is a mean, lean, H plus donating machine, right? Strong acid. Okay, so knowing that alcohols can both you know, act as a base and an acid, but knowing that this is a strong acid, this OH is going to act like a base. He's going to pick up H+. So usually how I do these problems is that if, if this was a, like a complete the reaction problem with a box over here saying predict the major organic product, here's what I would do. In the margins to the left, I would, you know, kind of do each intermediate step. So my first step would be, okay, I know he's going to pick up H+, and he's going to look like O. O oxygen with two uh, hydrogens on him with a plus charge. I then know he is going to leave, right? He's going to piece out, here, I'll draw it like this. He's going to leave, forming a carbocation at that secondary position, right? So I'll erase this. Now we have a plus charge here. Here's the point where you have to stop, check yourself, and say, can I make this carbocation better? And hopefully you guys are sitting at your computer screen, kicking back, saying like, heck yeah, we can. Because, remember, he's next door. So, what are our options? We have a secondary carbocation to the left, down left. That's the same situation we have here. We're already a secondary carbocation. However, a little bit to the top, right, we have a quaternary carbon with two methyl groups. So, you better bet that one of these CH3s doesn't matter which one, is going to do a methyl shift. It's going to slide down and actually go to this carbon down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, so 
the initial carbocation, right, is this carbon right here. This carbon right here. So I'm going to draw the final carbocation over here, then we'll predict the product, okay? So it looks like, right, we have our six membered ring. And if you look back over here, now we just have one methyl group up top. The, ethyl, the other methyl group moved down here, right, shifted down there. And we move the positive charge from this carbon up to this carbon. So remember, we started out initially having a secondary carbocation, but now through this methyl shift, now we have a tertiary carbocation. So the final product, uh, actually, this is a reaction we're doing in the next video, so I'm going to leave this as is. But this is the carbocation you would form in the net reaction. Okay, we can actually predict this product down here. So let's look at our substrate. He is a secondary carbon and he's attached to a good leaving group in chlorine, right? So now let's look at our solvent. It's polar protic, right? Because we have methanol. So this is a classic SN1 reaction, right? So what's going to happen? The very first thing is that this chlorine leaves, right? So I'm going to draw that carbon uh, carbocation intermediate over here. Whoops. That's a little too close. Sorry about that, guys. And we have... So, it looks like our charge is right there. However, right, is that going to stick? Let's look. To our right, we could move this to being another secondary carbocation, but that doesn't make any sense. But, if you look down, right, you can see that there's a tertiary carbocation, or a tertiary position, with a hydrogen on it. So let's do a hydride shift. Let's shift this sucker right up there. Shifting the positive charge from the secondary carbon to the tertiary carbon. So let me redraw that intermediate. So that's where the charge ends up, right? And then we have this CH3OH attack. And after a pro uh, deprotonation step, the final product will look like this. Okay, so I hope that these carbocation shifts make sense. The first worksheet I have for this series of videos, the first section gives you a few reactions that produce carbocations. You have to make the initial one, and then I ask you to say or evaluate, does this carbocation stay the same, or does it shift to make itself more stable? So if you guys don't want to wait for the next video, because the first worksheet requires knowledge of the, the, these, this video and the next video, if you just want to get started on the worksheet, you can do the very first section, okay? In the next video, we're going to talk about an E1 mechanism we're going to learn. So this is where we're going to start kind of building our repertoire of reactions. But it is prone, it is an SM1, or sorry, it's an E1 mechanism. So you know a carbocation is involved, aka we're prone to rearrangements, which is why I wanted to talk about this first. See you in the next video.